All right, now we're going to do quotient rule. So that's our next rule of exponent. So again, remember the basic of exponents, uh, the base, your exponent, how you read that. <clears throat> so for quotient rule, um, you're always going to have the base when there's the same basis. You're going to be subtracting those exponents. So that's for when you're doing quotient. For example, if you have x to the fourth over x to the second power, you would write x to the four minus two instead of adding now or subtracting. The same one for the other one, three to the fifth over three to the second power, you're going to be subtracting them. Now, technically, you always want to do m minus your n, but because sometimes that will result as a negative power, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to focus on that rule today, the whole subtraction, but I, to avoid us getting a negative number, I want you guys to make sure that when you subtract, you're going to either subtract on the numerator or the denominator with the higher exponent. And I'll tell you, we'll go over examples so you can see what I'm referring to. The reason you do that is if you don't do it that way, you're going to end up with a negative exponent that with that you're going to have to apply now the negative exponent rule, which we haven't learned yet. Some of you might remember it. <clears throat> We'll do that when I believe it's next. So now for this one, we have x to the fifth power and x to the third power. So you want to pay attention that the fifth power, that is the larger exponent. So that's why I'm going to do 5 minus 3. That gives me a positive 2. Because the 5 is at the top, that means that my answer is technically supposed to stay at the top. Because if I were to set this over 1, so if I were to write this as a fraction, so give me one sec. So if I were to write that as a fraction like that, um, the x over 2 is at the top because the x, the higher exponent is at the top. So <clears throat> let's look at b. For example, for a to the second power divided by a to the third power, again, you want to take the highest e exponent first and subtract it from the smaller one. Now, because my exponent is the higher one is at the bottom, I'm going to actually do the subtraction from the bottom, leaving me with a denominator rather than a numerator from earlier. <clears throat> the reason I'm not doing 2 minus 3 is because that will result in a to the negative 1. But this, once we go over this, this is actually 1 over a. Okay, so when you have a negative power, you have to move it to the bottom uh, and or the other way around. So you we haven't learned that rule, so that's why I'm just basing it off of look at the bigger number, subtract it. So, for example... Let's look at number two. We have three to the ninth power divided by three. Now, technically, this is to the first power here. And because I am subtracting them, I want to see, okay, which one has a higher exponent? It's the nine. So when I do that, I'm going to make sure that I am subtracting at the top because the th three to the ninth power is at the top. That's my numerator. So I'm going to rewrite this as <clears throat> three to the ninth power minus one which will result in 3 to the 8th power. Notice how that's technically at the top, because if I were to write this as a fraction, then the 3 to the 8th power is still up at the, the numerators part. Now, let's look at number 3. You have 2 to the 3rd power and 2 to the 5th power. Because it's quotient rule, you are going to subtract them. But again, I need to look, okay, where is my highest power? Because my highest power is at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and do 2 to the 5th power, minus 3 and the top is now a 1 because technically you're doing 2 to the third power um, we're simplifying that so now we're going to be left with 1 over 2 to the fifth power minus 3 so your final answer is 1 over 2 to the second power <clears throat> so then that would be your answer for this so now let's look at the next ones So for these, I'm going to do number 7. So for number 7, same thing. You look at the ones with the same base. So 4 to the second power and 4 to the third power. Those have the same base. Because the, the third power is the highest power, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. So I'm going to be left with 1 over 4 to the third power minus 2. And now for the y y to the 8th power and y to the 2nd power because I have, and that 1 is from earlier. You don't need the 1, but I'm going to put it there so you can see it. Now I'm going to go ahead and do it from the top. So I'm going to have y 
to the 8th power minus 2. So that's just saying, whoops, 1 times that. And we don't need the 1 down here, but if you want to write it, you could. Uh, so 1 times y to the 8th power minus 2. That means I just have y to the 6th power over 4 for your answer for this one. And then that's fully simplified. Again, the reason I'm doing it based on the highest power is because I don't want to be left with a negative exponent. Okay, the next one that I'm going to go ahead and do will be number 8. So again, we have the same base here. So 8 to the 5th and 8 to the 4th, that means I have to subtract those exponents. Because the highest power is at the top, I'm going to make sure to rewrite that part at the top. So 8 to the 4th power, let me rewrite it. A, sorry, a to the 5th power minus 4. And then b to the 12th power and b to the 9th power, because the 12 is the highest power, I'm going to, and it's at the top already, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at the top and then subtract them, which means that my answer for this one would be a times b to the 3rd power as your final answer. <clears throat> All right, now for the next one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do number 9. So 6 to the 3rd power and 6 to the 7th power, they're the same base. Because the 7th power is the highest power, I'm going to go ahead and subtract it from the bottom because the 7 is bigger than the 3. Now, k to the 15th power and k to the 19th power, because the 19 is larger, I have to subtract that at the bottom. Again, the only reason I'm doing that is to avoid me working with negatives. Uh, the next lesson will help you do negatives, and then at that point, you can subtract however you want. <clears throat> so then, let me see. For these, now that there's a 1 at the top, because that's what we have as your like leftover, kind of like your coefficient. Um, so now we have 1 over 6 to the 4th power and k to the 4th power. And... I'm actually going to reintroduce this lesson kind of once we do the negative exponents and then I'm going to have you guys do some similar examples to these and so that you guys can see you don't have to always subtract the, the smaller one from the bigger one uh, unless you don't know the negative rule power. So now that would be your answer. The next one is for 12. So we have 4 to the first power and 4 to the first power because they're the same power, you're technically doing 4 to the first power minus 1, which gives you 0. And remember that, and I'm going to write it out so you guys can see. So that's a 1 right there. So you would have 4 to the first power minus 1. That's technically 4 to the 0 power, which is technically a 1. So these actually cancel out or simplify to a 1. So because of that, I'm not even going to pay attention to that. Um, so I'm going to move on to the m to the 13 and m to the first power. Because the 13 is the higher power, I'm going to actually write that for the top. So I'm going to write m to the 13 power minus 1. Now my next one, n to the 9th power and n to the 12th power. Because the 12th power is bigger, I'm going to write that one at the bottom. So 12 minus 9. And then p, p to the 9th power and p to the 18th power because the 18 is bigger and that's at the bottom I'm going to write it at the bottom okay so you just have to decide and I'm going to rewrite this more in the middle 13 minus 1 so now from here let's simplify you're left with m to the 12th power all over n to the third power times p to the ninth power and then you're done again once you learn your negative rule um these are actually a lot easier to do because you don't have to do the whole top, bottom, top, bottom um, in, unless something is negative, which is kind of easier to fix later than it is now. So go ahead and finish the rest of these. If you have any questions or if you're wondering if you got the right answer or not, message me, um, send me an email, whatever is better for you guys. And then I can either give you guys if you did that one correctly or I can help you do it correctly. Okay, so just try them on your own. And then I'm going to upload the next video. Feel free to do the next one tomorrow or if you want to go ahead and get started right now if you don't have anything to do. So just work at your own pace.